happy. So first, welcome back to the show. I'm so excited to have you back. Happy to so, be here. Good to see you. So tell me about this project of yours. I'm so excited about it. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me back and to talk about this. I I vary in degrees of what types of projects I select, but this one was definitely a rather confronting selection. And I opted to do it because uh, hopefully being offered the opportunity to have conversations like this and have discussions like this where we can talk about what's going on in the world and, and why certain things are happening and so the film condition of return deals with a very relevant topic the issue of mass shootings and my character is the mass shooter in the film so you can understand the the nature of my reticence at taking on the role but ultimately it was because this conversation needs to be had and you you know um that i'm a massive mental health advocate and i talk a lot about my own journey and this was really what I was hoping to convey with this is that all the rhetoric and all the noise about guns and, and things in our world, they never actually talk about the root issue. And, and when the Department of Justice did their National Institute of Justice funded project research project, they discovered that 172 out of 172 shootings, 100% of the time, the shooters were in a state of mental crisis when they perpetrated the act. So you're talking about a very simple, very simple issue here. This is a mental health concern and it has not been broached and it has not been spoken about in this way. And so the idea and the hope for this project was to do the project and 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 it has a lot more layers than just the mass shooting aspect but to be able to talk about the mental health deterioration of my character and what that's like in the world and who do we become who do we become when we're faced with circumstance that's beyond what we believe we can overcome who do we turn into and and do we see our best self rise or do we do we go down with the ship and you kind of see my character unfortunately do the latter and the film takes on a very interesting series of events in the way that it it, it plays out but it starts at the end and kind of goes back in flashback and so it's a journey through my character's remembrance of of her life and the things that led to her to the moment she finds herself in or she's shackled to a table being interviewed by a doctor to determine whether or not she is fit to stand trial as far as sanity is concerned and the doctors played dr thomas is played by dean kane who was so wonderful to work with and and we had many conversations about the nature of this film and, and, and what it's all about so it was a uh, it was quite a project it was kind of a life experience as well as being you know my job and what would you say was the hardest part for you personally taking on this role? Because it is such a meaty role and it deals with such relevant topics right now. I appreciate the question. And yes, it does deal with really, really relevant topics, but in in very in, in a lot of ways, like with the religion, the issue with the religion that's kind of in a way poisoned my character's mind. Um, absolutely faith can be one of the most powerful things in our world it can also be very dangerous when it's blind and my character was a victim of blind faith in an establishment in societal and conditional norms and a whole list of other things but she her experience playing that out like actually physically embodying her at the end of her rope, which was her walking into a church with an AR-15 and shooting up the congregation. For Anna Lynn, the human body that had to walk those steps and hold that weapon and pull that trigger. The hardest part for me was I didn't want the ritual of doing this even one more time in our world 
never mind that it's not real and it's a movie and it, the actual physical act of doing that was one of two days in my 22 year long career that I didn't want to show up for work. And it was, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a reason that in history we've done ritual and ceremony and we, you know, with to speaking about faith, we drink the blood and eat the body. It's actually, if you think about it too long, it starts to get really freaking weird. <laughs> like what? We're drinking blood. You know, it's like, Oh, it's grape juice. It's wine. It's not a big, deal. but if you actually think about the sacrament, it's a ceremonial ritual act that is is s celebrating appreciating showing reverence to the life of yeshua the christ that's his real name i don't call him by names that are not his even though people call him jesus his name is yeshua uh, people messed up my name since the day i was born so i am <laughs> i'm on a little like crusade for yeshua um but the the ritual of drinking blood right that's like that's like a whole situation there that we could go on a different tangent but that was there was something really powerful about recreating that same situation over and over again through history and it was to solidify the remembrance to never forget this sacrifice that was offered from the messiah when you think about doing something physically with steps and ritual, you're coding something in the world. And I actually didn't want to code that. I didn't want to code a person walking into a church with a weapon and shooting everyone. I didn't want to do that physically with my body and be a part of that ritual. And so it was, it was kind of, it, I know it's very, it might be kind of like abstruse and a bit obscure, but it's, for me, I think of things like this and I think of the weight and the power of them. So that was really confronting. And, and then on a different note, the first bit of hesitancy that I had was born out of not ever wanting to glorify or glamorize something that's so atrocious in our world. We need the arts. We need to convey things like the issue of mass shootings and the root cause, which is the mental health issue that was occurring for my character and is the process of every mass shooter that's ever shut anyone or any any um, establishment up or any individual shooting a gun. Like you're not in a healthy, happy state of mind if you're pulling a trigger on someone. You know, you're in some kind of form of duress, most likely. So so the, those aspects were kind of secondary to just not wanting to do the actual ritual it's incredible and you're incredible for how well you did in that role i'm so proud of you for you're just amazing thank you so much i i put my heart and soul into it it was it was definitely it was definitely a milestone in my life it felt more like a, a life moment than a project because I I had to face some of my own demons <laughs> and and they had to do with what I was subject to when it comes to blind faith and and the people that raised me who were incredibly religious my parents were just products of a failed system of of believing in something without ever using your own mind the beautiful brilliant mind that God created for you. You just don't use it. He gave you a mind for no reason. So you just like have it sitting in your skull, but you don't actually actually use it. I don't understand that logic there. And even in, if you're looking at the scriptures, if you're looking at the text, it says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's a, that's a word from the scriptures. So, so a phrase from the scriptures. So I watched these two people who raised me just beat their children because of in one tiny little line in somewhere in the Bible, it said, whomever spareth the rod hateth the child. You aren't using your brain if you hit your child because a book told you to. You are an unintelligent individual <laughs> utilizing the utilizing enslavement tactics to to uh, to then justify abuse perpetration on a child come on 
no, I'm not going to give you a pass. I have compassion for my parents and I've forgiven them, but you don't get a pass. If you come to me and say, I'm sorry, I couldn't help, but I had to hit you. The Bible told me to like, no. So I had to actually energy of the, of the religious trauma that I've suffered came up and I was sexually abused by a pastor. So you can imagine like that, that was, that was my childhood of sexual abuse. It was perpetrated by a pastor. So, so religion has had this really terrifying theme in my life because it's how people justified abusing me for years. They used religion to abuse a small child over and over and over again. And, and there's so many abuses in the church. It's unbelievable i i can't believe that that we don't tax churches who have within their ranks pedophiles and abusers i believe that if you if you in your establishment can you imagine a corporation's like listen we've got a few pedophiles through the years but not that many and like can you imagine like and we just let this company continue to perpetrate these acts and we keep sanctioning them the the or we we keep protecting them the the i believe that any any establishment churches or other that especially churches because they're not taxed that has abuse perpetration in their ranks and has had that i think they should pay back taxes for all the decades that they've perpetrated abuses onto individuals and i think those funds should go into an actual full fund for survivors of abuse because it's expensive you know how expensive it's been for me to pay for the abuses that my parents and and these other individuals per perpetrated onto me thousands and thousands tens of thousands of dollars the hundreds of hours of my life taken away from me decades of my life wanting to kill myself like we should have a fund for people who can't afford it eve my character my character couldn't afford to get the help she needed to make sure that she didn't go into a church and shoot everybody like this is what's at stake because every single tiny little detail leads to something else, right? So for me, the this this was this was me having to look at a lot of things that have been incredibly activating and incredibly triggering and incredible or incredibly traumatizing, and therefore this project was incredibly triggering, and I had to also you know keep <laughs> showing up for the scenes so i was navigating a lot and and at the end of each day i was you know doing a lot for my wellness and my mental health to maintain my what has become my status quo because i ain't giving that up for no one anywhere ever again and so i i would spend the weekends i would drive up i'm so grateful that we were filming in the wonderful sacred lands of arizona and i got to go to the sacred vortices in sedona on the weekends and just do healing ceremonies rituals that i like to do um healing ceremonies sound baths uh, breath work all of these different things to cleanse my little energy self from from what I was experiencing but it was you know it was it was a journey in and in, in my personal life as well as as taking on the role itself I think that uh there was growth as a human being for me in this film so I'm very grateful to, that this project came into my life well first of all thank you for sharing your story and you're so incredibly passionate about this have you considered maybe starting a fund like that maybe doing like the <laughs> Adeline McCord fun to help others that have been through what you have? You know, I, I actually think a lot about lobbying on the Hill and going to DC and getting some laws changed on my, my own behalf, because the year that my memories of childhood sexual abuse returned, there was a bill that was trying to get passed in the state of Georgia, where I'm from, to prolong the process of, of victims being able to receive restitution. And would you like to know who the great big funders were to make sure that bill never got passed? I would love to know. As it turns out, apparently, the Boy Scouts of America and the Catholic Church had quite a vested interest in not seeing that bill ever come to light. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. So you can imagine, you can imagine that I, I have a little bit of a desire to see some of that wrongful 
action, wrongdoing, should pay penance, should pay taxes. Uh, I have a I have a deep desire to see rightful action taken because if you're going to use the tithes and offering that you collect from tax paying individuals on under the understanding that they're giving money to God for the Lord's work and you're going to you're going to be a part of potentially causing harm to some to a group of people who have experienced the worst of what humankind has to offer are you really are you really in such a pious place that you that you should hold such a reverence in our world that we have to ask these questions and i'd like to ask them on the hill <laughs> i would like to ask them where it counts because i that's what i would like to say i would like i i don't i would like i i don't want donor funds i want the church's money i want them to pay up for what they've done and 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 i think that a lot of people feel the same way that i do because it's our money anyway. <laughs> We're giving of our money to to offer this. It should go into a fund for this type of thing. And I think that they they do such a good job like a corporation of covering themselves for liability that they spend all the money that they would maybe offer to individuals who have been marginalized by abuses that are perpetrated by those who are in power. And they're using it all up for for protecting themselves from getting sued. <laughs> so there there's a there's a world in our very near future. And I hope that I, I hope that this young generation plays a role in it because they are withdrawing from the church in droves. The numbers of the withdrawal from religion is is at its pinnacle point is the, what I've read. And and I think that it speaks to not that that having faith isn't a beautiful process and but for me it's a very it's a very private and spiritual practice it is it is something i hold very dear and i have a personal relationship with my faith i don't have the need to to subscribe to individuals who may or may not wake up one day and decide you know what i want to take advantage of the system and, and whether they do that consciously or unconsciously, it's likely unconscious, but the, that, that whole situation for me, I think that young people are coming online and realizing like, it's not what it's cracked up to be. There are a few people holding the power of the connection to God and you have to go through them to, that's not the, that's not the design of it. So I know we're off on a little bit of a tangent here, but but I I have a deep desire to to at the very least bring a conversation to the forefront of why they don't pay taxes. If they run their company like a company, they they don't it's it is run like a corporation. I went on the Catholic website and it's it has a question and answer portion where it's like if people ask about the inquisition, how do you protect the Catholic Church and it gives you an answer of what to say when and how to navigate the the pedophile the pedophilia within the church. Well, technically a lot of the these men were were gay, so that's even worse. And like, there, this is a response, a Q and A on the Catholic.com website that is literally giving you, if you are a, a good Catholic and you need to defend, first of all, why do I need to defend God? Isn't he all powerful? I, oh, he needs little me to be over here in his defense. This omnipotent, powerful, all knowing, all pervading, all loving God needs little Anna Lynn. <laughs> like needs a Q&A on a Catholic website. I'm sorry, like mommy, make it make sense. It's like, you know, it's kind of it's kind of crazy. So I would like to bring to the forefront why is the religion protected when it's the faith that matters? Thank you. Why? I'm so glad you said that. Because that's that's a difference. That's the difference, right? If you have faith in an almighty, all loving Father, God, whatever it is for you that you believe, and that makes you a more compassionate, more loving, more wonderful human being on this planet, wonderful. Please keep believing in that God. 
But if you go to a church that you have to go on www.catholic.com Q&A, how do I defend my church because of its own perpetrations through the centuries? We're talking about something entirely different than than anything to do with what the vibration of God is supposed to represent. You're talking about just one more way to create arguments, war, conflict, and the antithesis of what Yeshua the Christ, the Messiah, and what what anything to do with faith has anything to do with about that it has anything it, it, anything about that excuse me so so for me the i just want to i would just like a town i would like a like a town hall you know let's just let's just bring religion across the board the word religion to the conversation bring the townspeople together and let's just ask some real questions the questions that the the that for centuries the church didn't want us to ask, so they burned all the books. And what, once again, why does God need you to burn a little tiny book? What's going to happen? You know, we've got a history of of perpetration from a from a, an organization that is putting itself on high as God, and anyone who goes against it gets brimstone that is created not in, in an in an afterlife in this life. You get burned at the stake here, whether it's your, your in, you know, you being ostracized in the modern age or actually the Inquisition and what they did. But I think that it's such a touchy subject because they prey on the vulnerable. And what's the what's the best way to be a, a dictator, a communist type of regime? Get them while they're children. Sad. That's what Hitler did. Hitler got all the kids and he he got them all in there and he brainwashed them as children. And that's what we do. We do that with religion. We say this is the only way it is and other people are wrong. That's and you tell that to a three-year-old. You tell that to a three-year-old child who just wants to love everybody. So so there's so many levels of it. And, and there's so many beautiful, wonderful spiritual people within the group. So you don't want to hurt those wonderful people that love their God and love their belief and love their faith. But unfortunately, they're becoming they, they are the rare side of this. The, the, the more predominant aspect is the perpetrating aspect. And, and that to me is why I would like it to be something that is that is looked at as a mental health concern in our world. Because uh, anything that stops you from using your own discerning mind could put you in a position where you will completely disregard accountability and blame it on, well, the church said to, the Bible told me to hit my children. That's why I did it. Like, I'm sorry, that cannot hold up in court. So <laughs> That's exactly what we need. And I'll be with you when you go on the hill. I'll go with you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And going back to your movie, what is one scene without giving too much away that you're looking forward to everybody seeing? Oh, that's a great question. There's so many different <laughs> light. Like she, this woman like has like is multiple lives inside one life. Um, let's see. What would be the one scene? You know, there's a moment with Dr. Thomas and Eve. And he's like, why did you do it, Eve? Like, why did you do it? And, and sh he's like, e these were your friends. Like you, you knew these people. Like, how could, how, how could you do that to your friends? And, and you see Eve's full programming come alive right just right in that instant and she says you don't understand they're all saved and he go, and dr thomas says saved and she goes i know where they're going i could have gone to any church and shut any church up i went to the church where i knew everybody because i know they're all going to heaven because they're saved and he's like, you believe that? And she's like, yeah, because it's true. And he's, and he's like, so you can just do this act and you're just forgiven? And she says, I don't make the rules. 
And that's it right there. That's what I'm talking about. The cop out. And not everyone does it. It's an individual choice. But but a religion that tells you that the, the certain weight themes and, 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 and offerings that old 2000 plus year old scriptures will say that no longer fit in a lot of ways in our world. If if you take a line out of that and you say that you're supposed to, women are supposed to be subservient to men, which is what was put forth in my childhood by my father. And I was like, I'm never getting married because I'm not, I'm never going to fall for this crap. I was like nine years old and I was like, I'm never getting married. I'm never having kids. How horrible to ruin the potential for what could be uh, my future love and excitement uh, for, for a young girl to dream of her wedding day and, and, and the beautiful side of that. I was so jaded and cynical. I was like, ugh, that's disgusting. I'm never doing that. And, and it stopped me from love in general because I was waiting for the other shoe to drop for the guy to say, well, now it's time for me to put my power foot forward and take over your life. And, and that was all because the Bible said it. And it's like, it's such a bastardizing of the intent of spirituality and faith to take a line out of a book, but you'll do it. You'll do it if you have the right to it because you didn't make the rules and you will use it as a cop out to get what you want if you are that type of human being. And unfortunately, we have a lot of those individuals in our world and and notions like this where blind faith is allowed and celebrated and supported these themes are perpetuated and so that that really that scene for me was really drove the point home of i can kill all of my friends and i can say i'm sorry that's so powerful and i'm grateful for forgiveness and compassion i've i have gone into the world of my mind during healing and i have looked the the perpetrator who sexually abused me as a child in the face and i offered him may you be happy may you be at peace may you be free from suffering i've offered him the meta meditation a buddhist practice that i do i've offered him loving kindness meditation and i did it until i was free of the chains of that anguish and pain and hurt and all the things and i alchemized all that energy i believe in compassion i believe in forgiveness i believe in those themes this is not about that i would never take liberty against you against your your audience against my friends or family or anyone with the intention that I'm going to say sorry later. That that's right there. That's the part. The most important part of every single choice that you will ever make is the intent with which you choose the decision. Exactly. I don't care what you do. You can you can screw shit up. I will forgive you full stop. But if your intent is to cause harm or to be less than straightforward and honest, you and me, we're going to have a problem, sweetheart, and it ain't going to look good for you, <laughs> you know, because intention is everything. And to me, that's the principal matter to, to walk into a church with an AR-15 and shoot up the church because she can say she's sorry and be forgiven because she didn't make the rules. That's not a world I want to live in where we do that. We, where we have that little accountability for ourselves and for the actions that we take. That's a dangerous world. Absolutely. And it's the world we live in. Yes, it is. I've been yeah, saying that it's for the years. World we live in right now. Yeah. So I want to change that, honey. I want to be a part of that change. And it requires us to be the change, right? We have to be that change. I am accountable for all the shit that I've done to people and I have made amends for it. And I am honest and open about, I was a shady little manipulative, pathological, lying little hoe. <laughs> and, and I have embraced the fact that of course I was, of course I was all of those things because of all the things that happened to me. And of course, now that I am aware, I will never invite those energies or actions or behaviors into my life again, not be by and from me and not with anybody else. I will always take ownership for my shortcomings and I will always learn the lesson from them. And, and I will always elevate to the next level as a result. 
th this is not a generalization. This is a fact. This is my commitment to myself. And, and I don't, I, it takes me a minute to commit. I've had FOC issues for a long time, fear of commitment. But when I commit, I'm all in baby. And my commitment to myself is full 100% transparency, full 100% accountability, full 100% authenticity. And if there's an iota of something that's less than that, I'm going to go right in, find out what's happening and clear that up. And it in a, in a religious faith like Eve, you know, she can't be honest about what's going on because her faith teaches her to be sh in shame and guilt. It's, it's constantly perpetuating the notion of guilt and shame. This, this you're unworthy. If you're made in the image of God, either he's unworthy and so are you, or he's worthy and so are you. But what I understand from a copy machine is that when you put the image in there and close the top and then hit copy, it comes out looking like the thing that it took a copy of. It's, you, you know, it's made in the image of, right? So, so there's a lot of contradicting themes, and I think that people take them out of context and use what they want to to fit their agenda and that's just projecting onto a deity a human failing so for me it's it's about ownership and accountability and faith powerful devotion absolutely to the highest you you can be and however you get there i'm not here to judge as long as you don't harm other people the the question is can you do that when you're giving up your sovereignty to an or to an entity or an organization that supposedly knows better for you what you should do with you and what happened with eve is what happens i believe an exaggerated version of of, of a hollywood version of what happens so what's next for you now that you took on this heavy, powerful project? Do you have another project on the docket now that the strike's over? Well, I have an unofficial project. <laughs> and to just to just sum it up very, very simply, it's the dream role of my entire life. And it came and found me in the way that that manifesting and, and and visualizing and believing and putting that love vibration out will bring things to you and i literally can't say absolutely anything about it but i i maybe i can get away with intergalactic indiana jones james bond barbarella <laughs> i love it we're gonna have to have you back to discuss it Yes, when I can actually talk about it, I would love to come back because this yummy, delicious, sexy, gorgeous, fun character is just my wet dream and she's coming to be and I'm so excited. Hey, I'm so excited for you. And one thing I like asking people I interview is tell me a fun fact about yourself. Okay, a fun fact about myself. <laughs> I recently i so i lead retreats around the world and i am a reiki practitioner and double reiki oh master so i'm a shamanic and practitioner yeah um yes. so i like okay so yeah so make sure it changes your life right it's like life changing yes, absolutely um so i was just i just got back a couple days ago from leading a retreat in egypt and I had two very powerful healers with me. And I had a powerful intergalactic language open up for me. So that's a fun fact about me. I now speak a code intergalactic language that holds a vibrational resonance that is a healing code mechanism, a codex. So it's really, really, it's not a light language. It's that's something different. This is actually a f f intergalactic language and it came through. It opened up while we were in the process of doing the healing pilgrimage we were on in Egypt. And it is every day I can just use it to, to work work with myself and to work with other people and to send a healing energy into their cells and their their bodies and um it's it's definitely a fun fact <laughs> i love that i love that. i would love to go to one of your retreats one day too yes please 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 yes i'll definitely if i'm ever in the area i'll already come to pennsylvania i'll definitely come 
Amazing. Sounds good. Yes. And since we're a TV site too, what are you watching these days? <sighs> I am obsessed. I've watched it three times already and I'm starting the fourth time with a show on Amazon Prime called The Wheel of Time. And oh my gosh, there's this actor on there, Josh Ostrodowski. He's so delicious. I'm like, ah, the dragon reborn. Um, he, it's it's an amazing show um, with Rosamund Pike. And so she's incredible and it's just yummy and delicious. And I, I keep watching it because I'm obsessed. And then I love the streaming network Gaia, um, which they have pretty much anything you want to know about the the world of the other realm, you know, on the other side of the veil. Uh, so I love everything Gaia. Nice. Got to check that out. And yes. we're follow you on social media so you can follow these adventures, your next project, your Ray K stuff. Um, yes. Yeah, so at the Annalyn McCord on Instagram and at I am Annalyn MCC on Twitter. And you can find me at either of those places. Beautiful. Well, as always, it was a pleasure to speak to you. And I can't ha wait to have you on again soon. Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> Yep, you're always welcome to be on. Thank you so much. So good to see you. Likewise. Talk again soon. And tell Jude I say hello. I will. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.